Welcome everybody to tonight's CITC and Wattle Local News. I'm Alex Pere. First up in tonight's news, the Australian Foreign Minister Julie Bishop is here on Rarotonga to reinforce Australia's commitment to an engagement in the Pacific in her first visit to Kiribati, Tonga and the Cook Islands as Foreign Minister. Two critical issues for the Cook Islands and for the region as a whole are climate change and fisheries. For the little time that we did get to spend with Minister Bishop, we asked what role Australia is playing in helping us to contend with the impacts of climate change and trying to sustain our fisheries resource. Well, Australia has taken a very proactive approach to reducing our share of greenhouse gas emissions and at a domestic level we have a significant program called Direct Action which includes a significant fund for uh, business and industry to access to reduce their greenhouse gas emissions and of course because emissions are not constrained by boundaries what we do in Australia does help um, reduce emissions elsewhere. We're also using our aid program to support um, climate resilience programs and climate adaptation and Australia is the largest aid donor in the Pacific so much of our aid budget in the Pacific is um, for economic resilience, economic sustainability in the face of climate change. We have also committed $200 million to the Green Climate Fund which was uh, set up for um, the initiatives to reduce the impact of climate change and that $200 million we have requested the Green Climate Fund focus it on our, on our region, um, including the Pacific. And we are part of the discussions and negotiations leading up to the Paris Conference on Climate Change at the end of this year. So Australia at a domestic level, regionally and uh, internationally, playing, we're playing our part. In relation to fisheries, that's uh, obviously where our patrol boat program comes in handy. It's very useful for Cook Islands to have access to um, a boat so that it can patrol its fisheries and um, watch out for illegal fisheries, fishing, um, fishing and the like. CITV reporter Alana Smith also asks, Many Cook Islanders, even the Prime Minister, have benefited from Australian tertiary education, but those opportunities are not available anymore. Is there any possibility of opening the channels again for Cook Islanders to receive Australian training or higher education opportunities? Minister Bishop today also launched a new Colombo plan in Kiribati, the Cook Islands and Tonga. 46 Australian students from four Australian tertiary institutions are said to gain valuable learning experiences and develop personal networks in these countries. In fact, there will be 12 Cook Islanders coming to Australia under the Australia Award Fellowships this year and they will be working in fields as diverse as coral reef management, fisheries, midwifery, um, nursing, basketball. So there are opportunities for and Cook Islanders to be in Australia. Uh, what we're doing this year is, for the first time, sending Australian students here to the Cook Islands. So this student exchange, I think, will benefit um, both nations. And under the new Colombo plan, 20 Australian students from the University of Melbourne will be spending a couple of weeks here in the Cook Islands. So this is an opportunity for us to enhance the student exchanges between Cook Islands and Australia. For us, at that level, uh, you know, her visit is very important. Not just to reaffirm the closeness that exists between Australia and the Cook Islands, but we have historical ties, and we have you know a significant number of our people living in Australia who made Australia their home, and we need to to focus on their interests and how we can enhance it. And uh, and I think it's important that we start with having a very strong and robust relationship with, uh, with Canberra. 